Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for an unboxing review. And today we are going to be looking at something Games Workshop. Controversial, I know. Um, I might lose my reputation for doing Forge old stuff at this rate. Uh, and we're going to be opening up um, the Horus Heresy Burning of Prospero, or Prospero if you prefer. Um, a, miniatures, a miniatures game of desperate battle in the 31st millennium. So yes, this is a second Horus Heresy themed box game that Games Workshop released. This was released in 2016 uh, and it followed on the heels of Betrayal at Kalth. And well, yeah, I guess the clues in the title. This is um, a boxed game that recreates the titanic fight between the Space Wolves and the Thousand Suns on Prospero, and, uh, and specifically uh, the city of Tisca. So let's have a little look at this. Uh, let's have a look at the back. The reason I bought this is it is just such good value. You get this enormous pile of Citadel miniatures. Uh, how many is it in total? Uh, 47 expertly designed Citadel miniatures. So no weasel words in here. Yeah, so 47 Citadel miniatures, Ariman, Gigor, Fellhanded, five Tartros Terminators, 30 Legion veterans, read Mark III Iron Armor Space Marines, five Custodian Guards, the Adeptus Custodes, and five Sisters of Silence. And then a load of other stuff, a 16-page background book, a 32-page rule book, two profile sheets, five double-sided board tiles, uh, that's a play area, 15 psychic power cards, 36 warp energy and willpower cards, gosh we need a lot of willpower here, and 24 dice counters and templates. 24 dice, awesome. Looking at this, uh, this looks like a ye olde days of uh, 40k, so we've got d6s, d8s, d10s and d12s. Mm. So yeah, I mean I bought this for the miniatures. I've bought it for the Custodians and the Sisters of Silence specifically. I have no idea what I'm going to do with the Marines yet, but I am going to play this game. I'm going to bribe the Cheeselets to play it with me, if I can manage to get them off their tablet computers for an afternoon. But I am going to play it to see what it's like. So I'm, I am interested to try it out. But beautiful box, absolutely fantastic artwork, weighs a ton, so there's loads in there. So uh, let's uh, get this uh, wrapping plastic off and, uh, and see what's inside. Very nice artwork. This has clearly been done by one of the guy, guys or girls they commissioned to do the Black Library artwork books. Oops, there goes the camera again, a little bit of a whack. And this guy, the reason I say that, well, I recognise the style, but this guy here just reminds me of the uh, picture of Shadrach and Medusan from the cover of the Medusan book. And yeah, there's all sorts going on. There's uh, Ariman versus Gigor. Some thousand sons milling around, some sisters, some custodians, and a, yeah, well, it's one space wolf. So, yeah, there we go. Right, let's have a look. Let's see what's inside this. So, nothing, uh, nothing uh, on the reverse side of the box. And what we first are, we first see is. Wow, that's a lot of Citadel miniatures there. Gosh, look at all this lot. This is rather exciting. This has been ages since I got... I've never bought one of these games. It's been a long while since I've got um, so many Citadel miniatures. And certain plastic ones. Right, what I'm going to do is while we look at these, I'm just going to move that to one side so we can get some of these guys in front of the camera without having lots of grey on grey. So this is the Tartaros Terminators. There is one, two, three, four, five. What do we get? So it looks like, I mean, there's, we've got shed loads of equipment. That's a technical phrase. Lots of combi bolters, chain fists, power fists, lightning claws, no power axes, but that doesn't really matter. Some excellent support weapon choices. We've got a Reaper auto cannon, a heavy flamer, and best of all, my personal f favorite, the plasma blaster. And oh, cheeky Volkite uh, charger there, probably for the possibly for the sergeant. Very nice. And uh, just look at some of the details on these bolt, uh, on these combi bolters. They come with, um, they've got, well, pre-drilled bores or cast holes for the muzzle brake. I like that, that's very nice. Let's have a look at some of the details. I mean, looking at these guys, they look 
these are really well detailed. I mean, I normally buy, I normally buy the resin models and clearly with resin models, you've got an advantage over the plastic just because of the nature of the material in terms of the sharpness of the detail. However, that said, these are certainly very nicely executed and you would not be disappointed at all to use these for a Horus Heresy Force. They're very nice models, lovely. And loads of accessories, including even uh, a grenade harness. Very good. Multi-part models, so I'm guessing they've got some posability and uh, Sergeant's got these little, yeah, I was gonna say dangly bits then, but that's not the best use of words, is it? I don't know. Um, yeah, that feature. Battle skirt, I don't know. Right, and let's have a look at the next sprue. So what do we have here? Aha, so here we have the kind of one of the main miniature reasons I bought this. And this is a custodian guard sprue. So wow, let's have a look at these guys. Now I'm very intrigued about these custodians. And what intrigues me about them is why Games Workshop made them. So two possibilities. Oops, that was rude, wasn't it? Two possibilities. One, they reached an agreement with Forgeworld to reduce um, production demand on Forgeworld. They agreed that Citadel, i.e. Games Workshop, would make the custodians and the sisters of silence to free up manufacturing capability in Forgeworld. Or two, uh, Games Workshop decided to get one up on Forgeworld and do and make these models before Forgeworld could. I don't know the answer to that. Anyway, what we're interested in is these custodians. And let's get a zoom close up on this leg. These look great, very nice. Guardian spears. You get the slap swords, which I'll probably, from my point of view, those are an acquired taste. I mean, they just look, I don't know, big slappy daft sword. I suppose you could, you could cut the blade down to not be quite so ridiculously wide. However, I think the guardian spears look absolutely spot on. Got those just right. And I've also got the Forge World Contemptra Killer Streadnought. And that model, that miniature is a really nice, it blows, increases, scales up the side of this, size of this weapon uh, into a dreadnought size weapon. And it, they've used some really good design cues from that. Mm. Loads of equipment. Oh, and here we have a, I presume this is the Misericordia. These knives, if anyone uh, has any idea what the rules are on those, please let me know because Forge would appear to have left it out of book seven. Whoopsie. So you can do these guys armed with either the Guardian Spears or the Presidium Shields and one, two, three, four, five, yeah. So I think you get, you get enough weapons to do it either way. So look at these torsos, yeah, lovely, lovely detail and design. The rear torsos, yeah, they look, they look absolutely fantastic. And there's the front, there's the front. I have to show these upside down, so the top, the tripod is in the way. There's the front torsos, but they've got this nice style thunder symbol as well. Mmm, sweet, very nice. And what is next? Ah, next we have ah. The, the the bane of all psychers, the Sisters of Silence. These are, these are the other miniatures I got this set for because I want Sisters of Silence for my custodian guard force. So we'll look at some of these guys. So the Sisters have got very, they wear powered armor, but it's very stylized power, powered armor. And it looks like a, a suit of, well, sort of like normal armor, I guess, but it is powered. Apparently it's not environmentally sealed. You get an interesting mixture of weapons, so we get sort of hacky stabby type stuff with these swords. I just forget the name of them now. Double handed sword. Some nice capes. Whoopsie, that might be some fur there. Watch out. A number of heads as well. I want to try and get some head some suitable heads, some female heads that don't have these masks on. A few masked faces are good, but I want some unmasked faces. I'm not quite sure I'm gonna get those yet. I need to look around for those. They get some nice mixture of weapons. So we've got a flamer, then we've got a good old trusty um, Umbra pattern bolt gun. They look suitably dynamic uh, in, their, in their poses. I don't know if these, 
I'm not sure how much posability they will have, um, but the, the sculptor seems to have done a good job of getting some posability in there. Right, what else do we have here? Ah, this looks like we might have our famous, uh, our favorite Thousand Sun. Ooh, yes, is this Iron Man? I think it is Iron Man. Yes, it must be Iron Man. There he is. There's his helmet. Ah, okay. So this, I guess, is some Space Wolf corpse. So the, this is most of these hero models are, is monopose. I'm sure as you can see, the detail is fantastic. And look at the, look at the detail they've got on this braiding. And on his, uh, on his sickle, staff sickle weapon. That's nice. Uh, look at that. They've, I don't know if that's, or maybe that, I don't know if that's supposed to be damaged in his armor, in his armor there, or if that's going to be part of where something else goes. Probably part where something else goes. Some nice details on his cloak there. Excellent. So that's Araman, and I'm guessing this, so what's this? Oh, we have more sisters. Uh, that's another one, two sisters. So yeah, okay. Ooh. The finger of pointing, so that's the finger of you're about to get a psychic headache, Mr. Thousand Sun, I, I think. Lots and lots and lots of heads. That looks like more heads than you need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many heads has this got? Mm, good, good number of heads, that's neat. So yeah, more Sisters of Silence. And I'm guessing this is going to be Gigor, the fell handed. Yes. Let's have a look at its face. Yeah, Vi Vikings in space. Yeah, I think the, is, the sculpture is executed this well Russ in a sort of Tolkien-esque Tolkien I'll try that again Russ written in a Tolkien-esque runic lettering hmm lots of very good detail again but again like Iron Man that, that'll be a monopose model so you won't have any variability in it um, big pack of bases so 30 and 32 and 40 millimeter bases. Don't know if you get any 25s for the sisters or if I just send them all big. Mm, do you get any? No, it doesn't look it. Let's see what we come across actually. That's all right. Yeah, see what we come across. So a 32 millimeter base is going to be way too big for a sister of silence. Right. And let's grab all of these. So these are going to be are Mark III Iron Armour Marines. All right, how does this work then? So we have torsos, front and back, so two-part torsos, Phobos pattern bolt guns, and Mark III helmets. And I don't know if you can see it, but there are a number of different design styles there. So a nice bit of variation introduced into the helmets to break up the look of the Marines. Of course, these have got the hand on weapon, so these are compatible with the Forge World weapon sets, which is good. So that's more weapons. So we only need to look at one of each of these and more weapons and shoulder pads as well, and well, pauldrons. Uh, and then we have the business end of the Space Marines. So how do these models work? So you've got a leg, you've got, so two parts for legs, which is an interesting way of doing it. Get the improved opposability of the models. And then you've got the arms, yeah, or the hands that are holding the bolt guns, or other weapons. Very good rendition of Mark III armor. Very, uh, very faithful to the Forge World originals. Well, obviously Games Workshop did this originally, but then Forge World evolved it. Got some Phobos pattern bolts, Pistols and holsters. Then we have the backpacks, which are one two part. Is it two part? Oh no, they must be. Oh yeah, two part backpacks. And then we have a oh, thunder hammer and a heavy bolt gun. And what else do we get here? We get 
a melt gun, a plasma gun, a plasma pistol, a Phobos bolt pistol in the hand. You get a power glove or a power fist, a lightning claw, and then chain swords galore. And a normal sword, which uh, looks very much like a, a gladius, or perhaps even a, um, it looks like a gladius, but maybe it's also styled on a, uh, a Viking sword, like a, uh, a f oh, I can't remember what we call them now, a fold pattern blade sword. And you get some ammo pouches as well. So you get a decent amount of weapons on these. With them being space wolves have been orientated to be more close combat. So you don't get the missile launchers that you did with the Mark IV set that came with Cal. So it's a bit less shooty, but more close combat-y. Anyway, that's rather neat. So these are perfect for doing despoiler squads for the heresy. And then you also get a Vexler as well. Excellent. And I presume these are the same, yep. Right, let's see what else is in the box then. So we get some, I guess these are the psychic power cards. Oh yeah, they okay, even put a sticker on for us. Cards, yeah. Okay. Dice. I guess red for the thousand suns, grey for the space walls, d6s, 8s, 10s and d12. So a great selection of dice in this game. That's uh, that's something in itself, isn't it? Yeah, you have to buy dice. And here we have the books. I'm presuming this is the rules and the background which have been combined together. Right, this is a bit when I try to open this on camera and I can't do it. No, no, I've not embarrassed myself. All right, off you go. All right, what do we have here? So we have Burn of Prospero with Ariman, Burn of Prospero with Grigor. And these are our character sheets and these are the rules. So let's go through these in order of prettiness. So we will start with, we'll start with Legions at War. So this is a background book. See so yeah, what's it? This is a... The Horus Heresy, so a font and colour scheme lifted straight from the Forge World books there. Nice uh, diorama with the various protagonists from the uh, box set. Okay. This is rather neat. So this is like a... This all looks like um, bits and pieces that have been lifted out of various Horus Heresy books, and particularly um, Book 7, Inferno. Mmm, very nice. Might do a little mini law review on this, you know. And then you get the same for the th so you get, there you go, you get the Space Wolves, the Talons of the Emperor, then you get the Thousand Suns. And then you get a uh, little sales pitch from Forge World with uh, various goodies. There you go. That's a nice little book in itself. So I guess if you, uh, that's, I'm going to read that. That looks like a, a neat little read, just for a, just to see what the uh, surmised background is like for this game. And then we've got the rules. So this is an equally nicely put together rule book. And this time we have a uh, Ariman on the front, so he gets a go. There's a diorama, space wolves, and a custodian, and and the rest of the crew, the Out sisters, yeah. Uh, assaulting the Thousand Suns. So this has all been done very much in the sort of style of a Horus Heresy. Then you've got a description of the th troops involved, which is quite neat. So you have to put that squad composition, how to set out the board. If it tells you, sometimes on these game boxes they tell you how long a game will take, but when I read the back of this before I started the review, it didn't actually say an estimated time for a game. I'm guessing this looks like Probably something that hopefully you can play in about an hour, but may, might take a bit longer. I hope it's about an hour if it's going. To, if we're going to play it with the cheeselets. Suffering damage. Yeah, 
Once I've, once I've had a chance to play this, I'll come back and give you a, a little bit of a rules overview of what it's like. I was um, at the Horus Heresy weekend, not this year, but the year before last. And on the final day, so all 400 people were there in the, um, in the main function room and uh, Tony Cottrell was doing a presentation. And, and uh, it was, they were talking about future direction. And he asked, a, we got into the subject of the Betrayal at Kalf box set. And he said, who's bought the game? And loads of, the, loads of hands in the room went up. And he said, who's played the game? And apart, apart from maybe three hands, all the hands went down. So, you know, the, certainly amongst that crew, and that was by sample, everyone was buying it for the miniatures. But um, this looks like it's been, you know, it looks like it's a, a, a comprehensive set of rules for this sort of box game. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays and and how the mechanics are working. And then a little reference sheet at the back. So yeah, very, oh, very good. And then we've got, so these are play cards. All oh, right, so you get a thousand suns one. So it's got your terminators with their weapons and then your legionnaire rules as well, including a like hero stats on Ariman. And then you get the same thing for the Imperial forces. The Legio Custodes, Sisters of Silence, and then the Space Wolves, including Gigor. Now, what's this one here? Ah, okay, so so this is a an instruction booklet showing you how to put together your 47 expertly designed Citadel miniatures. That looks very good. Ah, there we go. So sisters, so they are they are expecting you put the, to put these sisters on thirty-two millimeter bases. Hmm. I might put those onto twenty-fives. Thirty-twos seem too big to me. Excellent. That's good. And then we'll finish up by just having a quick look at the play stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah. They've given me a few. I wonder why those are in there? Do you always get those? Does someone just drop them in the box? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now the penny's dropped. So they've actually, this is a nice touch. They've put a few little sealable plastic bags in for, I guess, what well, the various counters. Oh, and wow. You even get a set of water slide transfers for the, the Thousand Suns and the. Uh, you get everything, actually. You get some. Eagles for the Sisters of Silence, you get Space Wolf stuff. Uh, and then also the Thousand Sons, the, the Custodian. Well, the Custodians have got all their insignia moulded on in their filigree. All right, so let's take a look at, at the boards. You know what this reminds me of? Way back in the day, this reminds me of opening up games such as, and uh, I'm showing my age, age here, but games such as Space Crusade, Advanced Space Crusade, Adeptus Titanicus, Space Marine. Uh, oh, and of course I can hardly forget to say Space Hulk. I've still got my original copy of Space Hulk and Deathwing and Gene Stealer. Uh, maybe one day I'll, uh, I'll do a retro hammer on those. But yeah, that does, uh, it does remind me of those old days from boxing these Games Workshop games. So these, so whoops, 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 oh dear, I'm making a mess of that. So we've got some, these look like kind of positionable pieces of terrain and they're double sided as well. Very good. And then these, these terrain. Now I think these are kind of, these are like the gaming boards. I get that one. Oh gosh. Okay, now I'm confused. I've no idea how these work. They're double-sided as well. So they've, uh, they've made use of their medium to get the maximum flexibility in here. That's a large room. And again, that's double-sided. And then we have the, the hall of runic tiles. Again, once more double-sided, all looks very good. And, uh, oh dear gosh. Well, this looks all like it's gone a little bit crazy in chaos, eh? Is that like before? No. 
So an Imperial Eagle has crashed to the floor here and symbolically has been run through by a manifestation of chaos tentacliness. There you go, look at this beady little eye there. And the Imperial Eagle's got this, I don't know if it's sprouted a eye or, it's, or if it's looking with, with fear at the, at the red ooze going across it. Mm. So there you go, a quick unboxing of the Horus Heresy, the Burning, or the Horus Heresy, mm -hmm. Burning of Prospero box set. Hmm, very good. I bought this from an independent, so it cost me 77 pounds including postage. So I will consider that to be a bargain for what you get. Let me know what you think about this Games Workshop foray into the Horus Heresy. Thank you very much for watching. I will speak to you next time and goodbye.